Hi, Karen from ediblewildfood.com here, and I'm in my garden. I'm going to show you some of the weeds that grow in my garden, which, of course, you know me. I don't like calling them weeds. This is Creeping Charlie, ground ivy. To many gardeners, this is a nightmare. But for me, I love it because this is so good for our body. It helps to detox our body. And being inland, this has a high concentration of iodine, which is what our body desperately needs. Being in the mint family is one of the reasons why it's so prolific. And you can see the stem is square. You can see that definite square stem. So you know it's in the mint family. And mints as a whole, yeah, they are prolific. But I, sometimes I think there's a reason for that because they're so beneficial to us in terms of our health. Maybe not our gardens, but our health. So Creeping Charlie is probably in most people's gardens. I don't have a whole heck of a lot because I use it a lot. <laughs> so I'm continuously taking some and putting it into my kitchen. This is stinging nettle. Now stinging nettle does, is typically not a garden weed but I have brought some seeds home and I inadvertently planted them and here we go. But I don't mind. This is an, an incredible plant. I love it. And Virginia water leaf. Although this is not right across North America, this is typical to the Eastern part of the continent. And it tastes, I think, quite nice. This is actually a transplant. I wanted to see how well it would grow in my garden. This is year three and it's doing well. I have a friend over here who wants to be in the video. He's looking for his peanuts. <laughs> okay, this is not broadleaf plantain. This is Plantago rugulae, which means this is the native form of plantain to Canada and the United States. The pointy leaf margin there is one of the telltale signs and the color of the petioles are usually purplish. Queen Anne's lace. This one doesn't grow too much in my garden, but when it gets a little bit bigger, I like to take it for the root clean it up and just simply eat it. This is the end hitting toward the end of April. So I haven't cultivated anything in my garden yet. Check that out. A really nice bitter dock. I've got quite a few of them here. There's another one. So bitter dock, definitely the cousin too yellow dock. So thistle or sow thistle. I even have some uh, wood sorrel or sorrel, whichever way you want to pronounce it, coming up. This is apple mint. Apple mint tastes absolutely amazing. And this was a transplant. Thank you, Vanessa. Harebell. These, I don't really have too many uses for it. I will toss it into a salad. But keeping up with these is really hard because they grow incredibly quick. Okay, let's keep going. These are buttercups, definitely not edible. And underneath my step here, there's your curly dock, or you can tell by the wavy margins. And moving right along, some 
cultivated plants that are coming back. My spinach. I guess in a crazy way, you could say I cultivate these guys now. Lamb's quarters. The start of something really good. I love lamb's quarters. More spinach. Garden mint. Okay, the sun hasn't come out yet, so unfortunately I can't show you the beautiful dandelion flower here. We've had a rainy start to the day. This is pretty much a lamb's quarter and mint garden right now. And here's the lamb's quarters getting a little bit bigger. In between my bricks, I have avens. Whether that would be the yellow or the white avens, I don't know right now. I don't think I ever will know. I don't want it here. So, oh yeah, you know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to pick it and throw it in a salad. <laughs> Container gardening. Of course, I haven't gotten anything started yet because it's still too early. But I'm going to let these lamb's quarters grow until as far as I can anyways, so I can enjoy them. I'm not going to eat this. I'm just going to show it to you. <laughs> this is on my, my mat. It's chickweed. Hang on here. There we go. And again, unfortunately, we've got a dull day, so the flowers aren't open. Also, there's some mayweed. This would be your broadleaf plantain. As you can tell that the flower or the leaves are rounded right there. There's no purple blotching on the petioles. And check this out. Look who's coming up. Evening primrose. Beautiful dandelion. Catnip. And this one over here isn't looking so good. I think the neighborhood kitty cats got to it. Oops. <laughs> That's okay. More yellow dock. Okay, and coming right along, more harebells. These will produce purple flowers. I didn't plant much garlic, but I thought I'd give it a go. There's five out of six that came up. Okay. And I think that's pretty much it. No, there is one more, sorry. Purple dead nettle. Now this didn't come up this year. These are actually transplants. I was at my daughter's a few days ago and I did a video about purple dead nettle. I'll put the link to that below. And these guys are transplants. Look how great they're doing. And we had snow two days after I transplanted them. And they're just doing magnificently. But of course, they are a mint. So they are hardy. And Riley's come out to join me. Normally you'll see Chance in my videos when we go for a walk. But... And I know he's not the one taking the catnip because he gets his own in the house. Anyways, <laughs> I want to thank you all for watching. Just thought I'd show you what my backyard looks like. So perhaps you can get out into your backyard or if you live in a condo or an apartment, go out to a local park. Just check out what's there.
and you'll be amazed how much free food grows everywhere. Thank you so much for watching. I truly, I really, really, truly appreciate all your support. It means so much to me. Thank you.